November 2020 is a weird time to be studying at Oxford. Here's an insight into a day in my life. My day usually starts with a 7.30 alarm. I first open the curtains, which greets me with an amazing view, before making my bed, brushing my teeth, then finally getting dressed. On a normal day, I will probably have cereal for breakfast since it's quick, easy and fairly healthy. I usually just check if I've portioned correctly since I don't want to get hungry too early on and I like my routines. On this day, I had a minuscule amount of milk to use up before I tried and failed abysmally to open a new bottle. Hence the scissors, you can all see that I was having a rough time. Until my willpower finally overcame the milks in a feat you could only describe as dull. I then forgot my mug because I'm very silly and can't even remember to bring the same three items to my breakfast every single day. I usually have a glass of fruit juice with breakfast too because it's tasty and makes me feel like I'm doing slightly better on my vitamin intake than I actually am. I mostly scroll through Twitter and catch up on social media whilst I have breakfast so I can wake up a bit more gradually and catch up with the goings on of the world outside of the Oxford bubble. I also listen to some music in the morning to help me feel more awake and energised. This particular day I was vibing with the fantastic debut album Razzmatazz by I don't know how, but they found me. Every other day after breakfast I will get a shave and do some skincare just to make sure my appearance isn't a complete mess, or at least that's the theory. At the time I filmed this I was in self-isolation, which meant I couldn't leave my room, and it sucked. A lot. Let me out! Let me out! One way I kept myself sane was with my hashtag FreeOxcentric sign, which I display for the rest of the college to see as they cross the quad. Truly, a powerful message. Another small method to boost my mood was an isolation advent calendar, so I could count down the days till freedom. Right, let's get going. At about 9am that day, I properly started work. The first thing I did was some writing up and finishing touches on a problem sheet I'd been working on the night before. I find I'm generally most focused and productive in the morning, so I try to take advantage of this by tackling the tasks I find hardest. Usually I would start my day on lectures for this reason. Since it's mostly sitting and listening, I find myself quite easily distracted, especially compared to when I'm doing more engaging work, like on a problem sheet. After maybe two hours of academic work, I do some stretches. Especially in isolation, I found I had very little incentive to get up and do anything, which meant that I was getting backache from being sat at my desk for so long. Encouraging myself to do a little bit of exercise helped to combat that. I then went back to work until 12pm. The engineering course here at Oxford is split into five different modules. Maths, Electrical, Structures, Energy and Coursework, which includes laboratory work. For this first term, we've had a maths component to our studies every week, which is what I was working on that morning. The problem sheets can take from around 10 to upwards of 20 hours, depending on many factors like the length of the sheet, how tricky the content is, and whether I have to copy out my solutions in neat or produce a well laid out answer first try. So far I've had two problem sheets every week, which is quite a hefty workload, but just about still manageable. Another small way I break up long study sessions is to refill my water bottle, since I drink a lot of water to keep myself healthy and look after my voice. Stay hydrated, y'all. However, after three hours at my desk, I thought I'd earn a quick comfort break. Well, I mean... Presenting the world's most aggressive tap. Ah! And we're back. I get my lunch quite early at around 12pm, since I find it better to take a break while I'm ahead, rather than when I've already got really unproductive or distracted because I'm hungry. What I often do is make myself two sandwiches at one lunchtime. One I will pop in a container to go in the fridge for the day after, and the other I will eat there and then. This also saves me time the day after, which I often really appreciate if I've got a lot to do. The average lunch for me is probably a sandwich, some fruit and a cookie. Not exactly the healthiest option, but it works for me. 
Lunch is a good chance for me to sit somewhere other than my desk. It's not quite as easy to eat from my coffee table, but it just breaks up where I'm sat for a little bit and helps me mentally separate work from leisure, which is pretty important when you spend so much time in one room. As you can see, I was scrolling through Twitter again for my daily dose of memes and US politics in the days running up to the election. These cookies are like the best part of my day. Objectively, they are so good. By the way, did I mention I like cookies? I like cookies. I then did a couple of chores, including emptying the overflow and recycling bin. Yeet! At which point, it was time to get back to work. I only had one hour of live contact time that day, which was my maths tutorial after lunch. All of my tutorials are currently done virtually over Microsoft Teams, however a lot of folks at Oxford do still have face-to-face -face contact for this element of their teaching. I usually meet with my tutorial partner for about 15 to 30 minutes before the session starts, discuss any issues we have and make sure that we're on the same page, which helps us both get in the right headspace and slightly reduces our chances of saying anything really stupid in the tutorial. Or at least, that's the hope. I think three, um, question three in terms of how you'd prove it's a triangle, just because there are a couple of ways of going about it. So what I did was dotted them to show it was a right angle and then um, Oh, yeah, I crossed A and C just because I thought it felt nice to cross two that were already perpendicular, but... Then we got to the actual tutorial, which went pretty well, or at least my tutor didn't let on that I caused them unprecedented disappointment. Um, one was that, I think we're probably one of the less straightforward questions on it, actually, I, but I think we, we got there in the end. Um, so initially I made the mistake of drawing it out as two right angles, which was completely wrong, um, but then... When I got the angles right, with a bit of cosine rule and um, algebraic manipulation, got there in the end. My tutorials generally consist of going through the week's problem sheet and discussing any issues we had with the questions to help resolve them. Additionally to this, we'll do some further exploration of the concepts the sheet is based on, which is a lot more qualitative thinking and the essence of what makes Oxford tutorials quite unique. Sometimes the tutor will pose us some different questions to recap or test our knowledge of the topic, but the format is quite variable from session to session, depending on both what the tutor wants to do and what me and my partner suggest we'd like to look at. So, that's that over and done with, time to get on with some lectures. Okay, completely unrelated, I've just seen an absolutely amazing rainbow over Queens, and beautiful. Instead of finally getting around to watching some lectures, I realised I was still yet to look at any preparatory work for my virtual lab the next day. Virtual labs can be a full day commitment from 11 to 5, however if I'm lucky I can often be finished a bit earlier than that. As someone who likes to be organised, virtual labs are nice in that I can usually do some of the lab's activities the day before, to reduce the time pressure in the scheduled session. However, some of the remote labs that are more experimental based don't give quite the same experience as doing it hands on would. Luckily for me, the lab I was preparing for that day was a computing lab working on some coding, and hence basically identical to how it would be run in person. As I mentioned earlier, this video isn't an entirely normal day in my life. I'm missing a pretty key part of my routine due to isolation, which is a walk either to restock on groceries or just get some exercise and socialise for a while. I tend to do this at around 3pm to break up the afternoon when I find I'm most likely to become unmotivated. Right, I'm hungry, it's 6 o'clock, so I'm going to get some dinner. It is cookie time once again, hell yeah. After I'd finished a second round of delicious cookies, I carried on with my lab prep work. In the evenings, I always aim to finish working on academics by 9pm, which is also about the time I find myself starting to get tired and unproductive. After this cutoff time, I sometimes try and do something creative, like editing a bit of a video if I have the energy, but often I'll end up calling a friend or getting an early night when I need a break. This means that my average working weekday is from 9am until 9pm, with about an hour off for each of lunch and dinner, and another hour of combined breaks throughout the day. Regardless of how late I'm working, I almost always start my sleep routine by 10pm on a normal weekday. I usually opt for an evening shower to help me sleep better, which also means one less thing to worry about the next morning. Remember, the rules of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Always know where your towel is. After my shower, I hair dry my hair to maintain the illusion of putting some effort into my appearance. I then do any washing up I've accumulated throughout the day. 
Having this as routine encourages me not to let my room fill up with dirty dishes, but also gives my mind a bit of a buffer zone to unwind, as washing up is a pretty repetitive and simple job. Often I find this is a time when I come up with new video ideas, as I'm at last able to process what I've learned recently and start drawing connections. Brushing my teeth and closing my curtains are the last tasks of my day, the latter of which requires quite a bit of engineering prowess due to how tall they are. Right, I think it is time for me to go to bed. Good night. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this snippet of my life at Oxford. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe for more content coming soon. Superintendent, I was just uh, stretching my calves on the windowsill.